Yeah, so today I'm going to handle something that's a bit disturbing to me. Disturbing to a lot of people and not others. Because other people do it to other people. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to use this vlog not just to say the happy things or the things I'm trying to do or the inspirational things. Nah, I'm going to also talk about the things that are not easy to say and are not easy to hear. It's like a rant. By the way, I just washed my hair, so if you're wondering what's shining over there, it's droplets of water. Hello, natural hair. Okay, so I'm talking about racism and discrimination. And I'm talking about this because the other day when I was uploading the video for India and why you should visit India, so I watched the video back just to see if there's anything wrong that I need to edit. And then YouTube on the side, you know the way they they suggest to recommend videos for you. So the first video that they recommended was uh, what it is, how it is to be black in India. And I was like, hmm, interesting. But I knew what was coming. I knew it was about racism because I've seen these videos when I was in India before. And I was like, wow, oh my god, my friends are so nice. I can't imagine people facing racism. And I watched the video and do the same thing, you know, people just facing the exact same thing. Uh, that I was scared of watching. So racism pisses me off and it has been done to me as well. Of course not as bad as most people but I'll just share my experiences so that you understand that traveling as a black person, African person is not as easy and it's not about rainbows and butterflies. This shit ain't easy because there are lots of people who are just born into a family that is thinking of racist ideas so they become racist or they just have these ideas in their head so there are three kinds of racism I've faced all through my travel the first one is uh, in your face racism this is just my own you know, category I like categorizing things so uh, in your face racism is the kind of just you know out there plain it's as simple as day you know you just see it for what it is and this I faced in the UK when I was trying to change my Qatar Airlines flight and I called and just because of my accent this guy became rude and annoying and it seemed like I was annoying him for having an African accent and I was like what the hell that was my first time to actually face any kind of racism because it was my first time to be out of the country I was 19 or something um, the second time was in Romania I was just walking and this kid, I was walking with some Romanians as well, and this kid's teenagers just decide to walk by and guess what they do? They just start laughing. And all the laughing of, ha 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 ha, you know, ha ha, she has interesting shoes on. I had nothing crazy on. Maybe my afro, but... So they were laughing. They were laughing not of my afro, anything I was wearing, just of me. They were laughing at what I am. And I was like, my. Yeah, that spoiled my entire day and I was pissed off. I was like, what? Yeah, that's, those are pretty much it. Like the, the baddest experiences I've had with racism. I know lots of people have faced much tougher things and if I continue traveling, I'm sure I'll face much worse. Unless I travel a hundred years into the future when racism is over or a millennium. Because maybe it will take that long for racism to be over. Uh, but if I'm traveling in the next few years, I'm sure I'll face other situations of in-your-face racism. The second kind of racism is camouflage racism. So I call it camouflage because it's hidden in some nice little package and you receive it and you're like, wait a minute, wait, this is actually racism and discrimination, you know? <laughs> so. The first kind of camouflage racism is the one that comes in terms of jokes where, you know, I think in Romania, again, uh, some the adults were telling some kids, the people I was with the whole time, they were telling the kids, oh you can lick her, she tastes like chocolate, and I was like, <laughs> very funny, <laughs> not funny. Yeah, so those are just things that happen and they come as jokes and it's terrible because they're it's, it's discrimination in a form of laughter. See, that's not fun. I'd rather make fun of myself, but not you make fun of me. 
in a discriminatory kind of way, right? So the other one was, you know, one of my friends in India, and hopefully she's not watching this. Uh, she, so we were walking in some alley, and then in the building that we were walking by, there were lots of people shouting, and it seemed like an argument. And then I just joked, oh, maybe I should climb up and see what's happening through the window. And then she jokes and says, ah, yeah, and then they'll see you and then they'll start thinking, they'll start wondering, what kind of demon is this that's on their window? And I was like, wow, thanks for the analogy. Very nice analogy. Yeah, I like to be compared to demons, you know, every now and then. <sighs> Thank God. And then the next one is, labeling so labeling i've seen this mostly in south america because it's sort of their culture to just label people you know oh fat one thin one so they call people flaca flaca means thin person gorda means fat person and you forever have that name whether you lose weight or whether you gain weight that's your name so they also have names for guess what darker skinned people and lighter skinned people so of course to them it's culture but to me it's it's still racism and discrimination in a nice package because they call you this name and they tell you it's endearing but really they're just labeling you something and they're telling you oh you're this and yeah it's still discrimination whatever they call it so they're calling us you know negra it was me and some ugandan girl always walking the streets negra morena yeah. To me, it's still discrimination, right? So you don't make note of something about someone that they can't change about themselves, right? Tell someone you know, you're being rude right now, you're being mean and stuff like that. These are things they can change. I can't change my skin color, so if you keep reminding me, oh, you're dark, it's like you're telling me, oh, that's a bad thing. I don't agree with that. Yeah. So uh, the next kind of racism that I've experienced is what I call racism in the undertones and this is probably the worst kind it's in the undertones because you know it's just sliding by underneath the surface and it's just flowing with normalcy and then you will not realize it until you see it for what it is until you scuba dive and see it oh my god so these are things like you know in Asia when people make comments like, oh my god, yeah, my skin is so pale right now, I love it because I don't want to be darker. Oh, I don't want to be dark. <sighs> yeah. This is, I've heard it a lot. Africa, Asia, South America, everyone is afraid to be dark. And I know it's, it's, it's something about them, but it's also a way of them saying that you who has dark skin has a problem or is not beautiful enough or there's something wrong with you. Like, oh my god, what is this? And then the other one is, uh, I think when I was teaching in Venezuela, uh, there was a question in the exam that asked students, my English students, uh, what don't you like about your face? And I'm like, my God, that's the worst question you can have in an exam, first of all. What is this about? So I have like 20 answers to a question of what they don't like about themselves when most of them are about, you know, I hate my darker skin, I hate my wide nose. I hate my curly hair and you know you put two and two together and that's this black person right so in short my students are all telling me oh we don't want to look like you because you to our eyes are ugly oh my God. you know so things like that and they come you know deep in conversation in the midst of conversation and they sneak in and you realize this is the worst kind of racism and discrimination or you know mindset of racism uh, and discrimination of course it's not towards me but it is something that is pointing towards the racism that exists in the world and it pisses me off because none of us I'm talking about black people none of us were in the womb and we were told oh which race do you want to be me 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 I want to be black no one chose their freaking race so you can't discriminate people over something they can't change Discriminate people over being evil, over being criminalistic, over being careless because those are things they have control over but I have no control over how I am so do not discriminate me or tell me, you know, give me messages 
telling me that I am not as good as this other thing, you know? So, I can say a lot more things about this topic, and I think I will over the few, the next few weeks or months, if I find different ways to package it, but yeah, that was my rant about racism and discrimination, and the different kinds of ways I've felt it, because uh, what I've just mentioned is just things that have made me feel like I'm not worth enough, I'm not beautiful enough. And any kind of thing that comes in that way, to me, is racism and discrimination. So, thank you for watching my rant. <laughs>